Hello everyone and welcome back to Jacklit Educational Channel. So this is the part 4 for the previous questions for the RSPCV exam for JSO and JE entrance. So this will be equally helpful for the UGC NET environmental science exam and other environmental science related entrances. So if you haven't checked the previous lessons, you can check the link given in the description below. So we will discuss the questions after I will read the question, then I will wait for certain seconds, then I will reveal the answer. So let's read the question first. The first question is, which one of the following are the correct percentage of the two greenhouse gases that contribute to the total global warming? So in each option, two greenhouse gases are given with their respective percentage to their contribution for global warming and you have to identify the correct option. And here the correct option will be option number D. Yes, CFC contributes to the 14% to the total global warming and methane contributes to the 20% to the total global warming of the earth. So you should also know about the rest of the gases because it is one of the very important questions which can be asked. So number one is carbon dioxide which is contributing around 60% to the total global warming of our earth. Next is followed by methane that is 20% followed by the CFCs 14% and then NTO is having the 6% share or contribution for the global warming. Let's move to the second question. The second question is very easy. I guess everyone will be able to answer. The second question is explosives will be categorized as which of the following. So what category will be given to the explosives? So here the correct option will be they will be categorized under the hazardous waste. Yes. हम हर किसी explosives को ये नहीं बोल सकते कि वो industrial waste से निकलता है या फिर ये नहीं बोल सकते कि it is coming from the demolition waste. Demolition waste are the waste which are taken or which are found when we are demolishing the bindings or industries. So after demolition those things that are cements, the bricks and all they are coming under demolition waste. So they are not the explosives. Similarly municipal solid waste are also not having the explosives. So hazardous waste will be the correct option. Let's move to the next question. The next question is the principal source that is the primary source, the major source of volatile organics that is mostly hydrocarbons is what? And the options are on your screen. So here the correct option will be option number C. Yes, the transportation sector is the major sector that is the principal source for the volatile organic compounds. So volatile organic compounds are the compounds which are easily vaporized into the atmosphere. So jo easily vaporized ho jate hai, volatile organic kehte hai, and mostly they are released from the transportation sector. Let's move to the next question. So the next question is the tropic of cancer passes through which of the following states in India and the options are Rajasthan, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala or Jammu and Kashmir. So here the correct option where the tropic of cancer passes in India will be Rajasthan among the following options given and you should also know where these lines are passing through which of the states in India. So these are also important one of the frequently asked question. So the tropic of cancer you have to tell me in the comment section that what is the degree of tropic of cancer I will not mention here. So this is passing through Rajasthan, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Jharkhand, West Bengal, Tripura and finally Mizoram of our country. So let's move to the next question of this video. The next question is the name the major alternative vehicle fuel that means which can be used in place of the petrol and diesel implemented in most of the public vehicles of Indian cities for the air pollution control. And here the correct option the very easy very simple will be option number B compressed natural gas that is CNG are the alternative vehicle fuel and you should know what are the composition of a CNG. So CNG is 93% composed of the methane then followed by nitrogen, carbon dioxide, propane and also traces of ethane are also present in the CNG that is compressed natural gas. Let's move to the next question and the next question is actually homework for you. You should tell me in the comment section that sulfur containing bacteria present in the municipal sewage are what kind of bacteria? Whether they are heterotropic, autotropic, saprophytic or pathogenic. So this is the homework question. Let's move to the next question which we will discuss. And the question is 
the function of automobile catalytic converters it is also important you should know catalytic converter are used to reduce the air pollution from the automobiles and it is used to control the emissions of which of the following gases and here the correct option will be none of this yes actually this question is absurd because the catalytic converters are of two kinds so you should know here there are two kinds of catalytic converter one is two way catalytic converter another is three way catalytic converter so what are the differences you should know so the two way catalytic converter converts two process number one is it converts the carbon monoxide oxidation of carbon monoxide to the carbon dioxide which is less harmful it also oxidizes unburnt hydrocarbons to produce carbon dioxide and water but three way catalytic converter is the higher one which is having more very useful capacity it converts the nitrogen oxides to nitrogen and oxygen so along with these two steps it also converts nitrogen oxides to nitrogen and oxygen and it is one of the best useful instrument as compared to the two way catalytic converter but here in the question it was asking that the function of automobile catalytic converter it was not mentioned that it is whether two way or three way so if it is not asking you should think that it is asking about two things which are common that means it is converting the carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide and it is also converting hydrocarbons into water and carbon dioxide so if it is asking two way or three way then you should go for this because here also it was present carbon monoxide and nitrogen dioxide but it is not given any option then you can go for this option that is common for both kind of catalytic converter let's move to the next question the next question is the major pollutants emitted from the coal based power plants you should know here it is mentioned coal based power plants are what so analyze every options carefully so here the correct option will be option number d yes whenever you will see coal first of all search for sulfur dioxide yes coal means sulfur dioxide will be anyhow emitted so here in both the options were given in option b and d so sulfur dioxide is present but this thing arsenic is not that much emitted from the power plants but the second thing you should look for is nitrogen oxide so oxides of nitrogen are also emitted from the coal based power plants as well as the particulates so option number d will be the correct option let's move to the next question the next question is which is a suitable method for the disposal of toxic waste so you should know toxic waste should be disposed according to the option number b yes as per the secure landfill process we should dispose the toxic waste we should not go for gasification that means burning because it will create more nuisance in the atmosphere we cannot go for open dumping because it will also release the gases and we all will be affected and also we cannot compost them because not made up of organic substance they cannot be used for composting so secure landfill that means landfill should be protected from all the sides to prevent the flow and how can we protect with the help of bentonite and butyl rubber which are used as the sealants for the landfill so you should note it down bentonite and butyl rubber which are used as the sealant for the landfill site so let's move to the next question so the next question is which metal is not found in the e waste so e waste means electronic waste mein kaun sa metal paya nahi jata so this is very easy i guess everyone will be able to answer and the correct option will be calcium so how can we find calcium from the electronic waste because calcium is mostly present in the body of plants and animals so we cannot find inside the electronic waste but yes mercury lead and cadmium are the major components of the e waste let's move to the next question the next question is united states environment protection agency developed a state of the art screening tool for the administrative agencies to prioritize pollutants named as what so whether it is dana nada tana or nata so here the correct option will be option number d they developed the nata that is nata full form is national air toxic assessment for the art of screening tool for the prioritization of pollutants so you should note it down national air toxic assessment let's move to the next question the next question is from the ecology and evolution part yes let's read the question first the first question is the industrial melanism is an example of what so here the correct option will be it is the response to the air pollutants seen in the mostly case of arthropods so we'll know in the next slide more deeply about the industrial melanism because it is a very important concept 
so this industrial melanism is an evolutionary effect so due to evolution this happens prominent in the arthropods where dark pigmentation has evolved in an environment affected by the industrial pollution so let us example somewhere there is the industry and it is polluting the atmosphere with the help of gases so not help of with the release of gases so as a result these arthropods they develop the dark pigmentation on their body so you can see here this butterfly this moth actually this is called as peppered moth which has developed the black coloration due to the pollution it is seen in the england and here also you can see it is having the dark coloration which is camouflaged with the trees and the rocks so as a result it is also sometimes getting benefits from the predator because the predator is not able to see as they are blending in the environment so this was the example of the industrial melanism which took place between 1845 to 1890 in england due to the industries which were releasing the harmful gases such as sulfur dioxide and dark soot so as a result these insects they developed due to adaptation let's move to the next question so the next question is the temperature of the municipal wastewater is what kind of so whether it is higher lower or slightly lower or same as the normal water supply so here the correct option will be option number b yes the temperature of the municipal wastewater is slightly higher than the water supply because there are several different microorganisms present in the municipal wastewater so as a result they increase the temperature of the municipal wastewater as compared to the normal water so what is the temperature of the municipal wastewater we should note it down it is around 30 to 35 degrees celsius but in case of normal water it is around 15 to 25 degrees celsius so let's move to the next question the next question is coming up from the smog section so the question is the great smog of 1952 was formed over which of the following cities and here the correct option will be it was formed over the london city and you should also know the los angeles smog was formed in los angeles in the year 1943 and these two concepts that is los angeles smog and london smog are very important if you want to know more about this smog because they are frequent last question i'll provide the link in the description you can go through them so let's read the last question of this video and the final question is related to rajasthan as it can be helpful for the rspcb so the question is where in rajasthan is situated the longest wall in the world after great wall of china so for many of you it will be new thing that after great wall of china we are having india is having the longest wall and where it is situated in rajasthan so here the correct option will be option number a yes the kumbhal girl fort is having the longest wall after the great wall of china and you should know what is the distance so what is the length of that fort what is the length of that wall the length is 36 kilometer so that is the length and this is present in the raj samanad district of rajasthan so you should note it down kumbhalgarh fort 36 kilometer is the longest world after the great wall of china so i hope you have learned something new from this video so keep enjoying keep learning and subscribe the channel to get further updates all the best for the examination